Hello, and welcome to another episode of Develop with WP. My name is Bobby, and today we are going to start building um, our custom fields within our, our custom meta boxes that we made in the previous video. Uh, this is going to be like a multi-step process. I think, to, I think I'm trying to make the videos a lot shorter, and also this is some of the more technical stuff that we're going to be doing. So I thought it would be best to break it up into segments, uh, and you know, just take it, take you know, make progress incrementally. I think that's a word. All right, so let's get started. Uh, right here, you can see this job listing. You can see this meta box that we created uh, in the previous video. Now we're going to populate it with some data. So. Well, first thing I want to do, excuse me, is we actually made an error. Well, I made an error, and I put this callback function for the meta box on this job render page. And we actually want this to be on the uh, job fields page. So here's the function that we use, the add meta box call to create that meta box. And here is this callback function. So what we want to do is actually put that down here below. All right. And then the next thing we are going to do is we are going to create some fields. So first thing I need to do, uh, this is all just going to be HTML here in this video. So the first thing I need to do is close out PHP and then reopen PHP below. And what that will allow me to do is it allow me to you know, just to write regular you know HTML like these divs. Okay. So the first thing I am going to do is create a div, and then I'm going to create, and that's going to wrap all of the fields. Next thing I'm going to do is create another div, and I'm going to give it a class of meta-row. Now that class meta-row is a is a class that I created. Um, later on in another video, what we're going to do is we're going to use all these classes that I'm about to spit out here um, to customize how these um, how these uh, you know HTML elements look, make make it look a lot cleaner and a lot more detailed. All right, the next thing I wanted to do is create another div. And this one's going to have a class of meta th, as in like table head. So we're not doing tables here, but uh, it's kind of a table type layout. And with that being said, I just thought it would, you know, for like nomenclature purposes, it just it just made sense to me to name them this. It, again, you can name whatever you want. Next, we're going to create a label, um, which is going to be four, and the four here is going to be a, is going to be job ID. And this job ID you'll see is going to relate to an input field that we're going to make here in a minute. We're also going to give this a class of DWP row title. And we're also, let's see, that's all we're going to do. All right. And we're going to give it, and then we're just going to tell this label to output job ID. All right. Then we're going to skip down here and do another div, a div, <laughs> a div uh, with the class of meta table data. Again, those can be whatever you want. And this is just going to be an input field. The type is going to be text. We're going to give it a name parameter. And the name parameter is going to be the same. It's going to match that four um, job ID for the label that we did above that and now we can link these um, we're also going to give it an ID of again job dash ID and then lastly we're going to give it a value now the value is going to be something we're going to use in the next video so I'm going to just leave it as as empty right now but in the next video we're actually going to pull from the database and get a value that we're going to place in there um, depending on whether or not there is a value. So again, don't worry about it. We'll do it in the next video. So I'm going to save this. I'm also going to go back here and save this, this page and get rid of this function and save it. So I removed the function from here where I erroneously put it before. Now it is here and we populate it with data. Now what we want to do is go back here and refresh. And there you go. Now you see our input field that we've created here. So what's going to happen here is we're going to create a whole bunch of fields, different input fields, text areas. We're going to have a multi-select drop-down. We're even going to use something called WP Editor. Uh, the only thing I want to show you here, 
I'm not going to show you how to do all those on here because again, it's just HTML. You can easily create whatever you want from here. I think I just wanted to show you the basic premise of what we're doing here with this. Uh, and so between now and the next video, I'm going to go ahead and populate all the other stuff in here. Feel free to pull the code from the gifs that I include in the links here if you want to get all that code, but there's no need for you to watch me do it. So the last thing I want to do though is I want to use, one of the things I'm going to use is called WP Editor. And I want to show this to you before we close out this video. So if I go to WP Editor, because this is a really cool and unique, um, a really cool and unique thing to do. Um, because as we want in our in our custom post type, we want to have a norm, a normal editor. But like I've shown you before, or I hope I showed you, if you just use the default editor when you're creating your post custom post type, you can't place anything above it. And I want this editor to show up in a certain spot for me. So one of the ways you can do that is you can use this WP editor function right here and put in an editor wherever you want. You can have more than one. It's really neat. So I do want to show that to you. So let's let's make that happen. Okay, so we're in our PHP. So we have to be back in our PHP for this because um, it's, it uses PHP. I don't know how to put it. I do want to do one thing really quick though is I do want to make this div of with a class of meta row. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think how I want to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're good here. Meta row, and then I'm going to do my first div of meta table head. So this is all the same as the other ones we did. And then inside of here, I'm going to put a span, and it's going to say principal duties. Because that's this that's what this editor section is going to take care of. And then I'm going to do one more div of meta editor. So that'll be the custom class that we use to handle this editor. And again, I'm going to have to I'll probably look at this later cuz there's got to be a better way to do this. But I'm going to exit out of and into PHP one more time just so I can get my closing div on the other side. All right, we're back inside of PHP, and let me give me some, so we're not at the very bottom here. Back in PHP, the first thing we're going to do is this thing requires two parameters. One is the content, one is the editor ID, and then you can set all these different settings. So let's go ahead and create these as variables, and then we'll pass them into the function. So it'll look something like this. It's going to be dollar sign content equals get post. All right, so don't worry about what all this means right here. We're going to cover that in the next video. All right. And then the settings. So, dollar sign settings dollar sign settings it's going to be an array because uh, I'll show you here in just a second if you look at the codex there is a ton of different options you could set for this um, if you've been following along in this tutorial series what I'm doing here is nothing nothing new we've been following this kind of like coding pattern for quite a while now All right, so let me save this. If we look at the codex, you'll see that the arguments, which are the stuff you can push into the settings, you have the text area rows, which I've set 
Um, it defaults to 10, which means it's a really big like text or it's a really big editor. I've set it to five. I'm actually going to set it to eight. Um, but essentially what I'm doing there is I'm telling WordPress how big to make that editor. And it's really just an aesthetic thing, but um, I want to go ahead and do that. And the other thing I want to do is I want to use this media buttons setting. And I'm going to set it to true. That way it'll have all the buttons that a normal editor would have. And then the last thing we need to do is actually call WP underscore editor. And pass in all these parameters. So it's going to be dollar sign settings, dollar sign editor, and dollar sign settings. Actually, yes, <laughs> content needs to be right here. All right, now let's see if I messed this up or not. If we go back to our job listings and refresh. Boom, there you go. You see our editor, and you see this add media button up here so they can add media. If I were to go in here and take this away and refresh, then you would see that it would disappear, and it did not. I wonder if I didn't save. Did I not save? No, it won't go away. I don't know. I'll have to figure that out. Media but Oh, it defaults to true. Duh. <laughs> so it's always there. The only, thing I, the only thing I could do would be set it to false. So I don't know. Let's do that. Because I want to show you that stuff changes, man. Yay, it's gone. All right. So that's it for this video. I'm not going to take any more of your time. Uh, in the next video, we're going to do, we're going to continue with this um, process, you know, because now we have to actually um, validate, save, and update our database and that kind of stuff. So we're going to be going through that whole process in the next video. So again, thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.